remembrance of them every year and every day. Today we stand on the courthouse lawn of this county and this state, along with many thousands of others throughout this country, remembering the dead who did not die in vain. We thank you for their memory and for their sacrifice, and we pray that today will bring honor and glory to their name. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. We do welcome you today to this most honored and sacred occasion. It is not taken lightly by the families nor by those who are present today. We have vowed and we kept that promise and we'll keep it into the future forever as long as life and this world shall last. We remember those soldiers, those sailors, those Marines, those airmen, Coast Guard or whoever they were and those who have served in other difficult places. Today is just a brief reminder of our dedication to that task. We thank you for coming and we know that this will be a special day especially for the Gold Star mothers and others who have long endured the loss of their loved ones. Thank you. It's indeed a privilege of mine to be able to speak today in behalf of those who have given their lives for our freedom and for this country. I want to make a, an announcement before I get started. Someone lost a medal here last year, and if you will see Jimmy Ross to describe that medal after this is over with, he has that medal to give to you. The first thing that I want to do is read the names of those who have fallen this year. Uh, this may not be a complete list. We tried to put this list together at the funeral home just a little while ago. Edward Bridge, Army. Billy Black, Army. Gene Gallon, Army. Ronald Hall, Army Air Corps. Bobby Johnson, Army. Raymond Lambert, Air Force. William Loudon, Army. John Phillips, Army. S.P. Pertle, Army, Algy Rushing, Army, Crota Dunlap, Army, Robert Robertson, Army, Jim Wyatt, Navy, and Mark York, Navy. I'm going to read to you the words of a song before I go any further. I knew a man called Sandy Kane. Few folks even knew his name, but a hero, yes, was he. Left a boy, came back a man, still many still don't understand about the reasons that we are free. I can't forget the look in his eyes or the tears he cries as he says these words to me. All gave some and some gave all, and some stood through for the red, white, and blue, and some had to fall. If you ever think of me, think of all your liberties and recall, some gave all. Sandy Kane is no longer here, but his words are oh so clear as they echo throughout our land. For all his friends who gave all, who stood the ground and took the fall to help their fellow man. Love your country and live with pride and don't forget those who died. America, can't you see? All, some, all gave some and some gave all, and some stood through the red, white, and blue, and some had to fall. And if you ever think of me, think of all your liberties and recall, some gave all. I'd like to read a passage of scripture I think is most appropriate for today, 
found in Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 9. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. There are only two that really die for us. Christ died for our eternal life, that we might be freed from sin. The soldier died for our freedom, that we might be able to be free. And I ran across this, I'm sure that you've heard it before, some of you have anyway, but I thought it most appropriate to read today. It is the soldier, not the minister, who has given us the freedom of religion. It is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us the freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the campus organizer, who has given us freedom to protest. It is the soldier, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is the soldier, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, whose coffin is draped by the flag, who allows the protester to burn the flag. We truly live in a land that is beyond description, but it was because that there have been brave men and women who were willing to sacrifice everything. I read one time where the soldier actually writes a blank check to this country when he goes to war. He doesn't know if he's going to come back, and we honor those men and women who have given their lives today. I want to read two other things before I close. One of them is from our state overseer. He posted on his blog uh, over the weekend. This is just a portion of it. Americans have given their lives for the advancement of the cause of liberty and justice around the world. Millions have been set free from tyrants, dictators, and thugs who often were bloodthirsty and evil. A legacy of honored sacrifice is recorded in the history book, which sadly enough is being offered by revisionist historians who see capitalism as an eccentric evil. If this nation were to collapse, the horror that would be unleashed on the masses would be unbearable, and generations of free peoples would suddenly be enslaved to the whims of dictators. Technologies and advancements in science would come to a screeching halt, and compassion would be a scarce demonstrated commodity held only among the ruling classes. Today, we have the ability to travel throughout our nation and across the country and state lines at will. We have the ability to gain education, to disagree on everything from religion to politics, and the choice to participate in the elections of our leaders. This representative republic has stood on the shoulders of free men and women who demand something better for succeeding generations. On the sacrifice of lives, life and limb of the brave soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guard, they left their homes, often giving up careers to serve with distinction in jungles, deserts, mountains, and on seas. And the last thing I want to read to you comes from someone most of you know well who served in the Navy. Harville Martin wrote this, and I wanted to read it today. I have seen men dead because of war. I have seen men who could walk and see no more because of the ravages of war. But the hardest thing for me to take, the thing that makes my heart break, is to see and hear of the young men and women who never reach 30, who never hear their babies cry, who really never got to know their brand new brides, who never got to walk that long church aisle to face someone and make a vow, who never came back to catch a ball thrown by a son in whose eyes he stood tall, or see a little girl with loving hands play a piano so grand just for him. Never again in that fishing boat would he go to sit on a lake and enjoy a day so slow. These are the ones my heart bleeds for and for their families and close friends with whom they will laugh no more. So this Memorial Day weekend, please do not forget those who mourn still yet. For although they were wounded, they were not wounded physically, they, 
remain a casualty. Their loved ones paid an awful price. These will pay all their life. God bless the families whose sons and daughters gave their all. May we never forget they answered the call. Harville Martin. And Harville's son, who is serving in, I want to say that he's in Afghanistan now, he writes behind his dad, rest in peace, my brothers. I have seen your unselfish actions in the face of extreme adversity. I have witnessed your courageous deeds at the cost of your own life. This nation can never repay you or your families, and we will never forget. It's been an honor serving with you. Would you bow your heads and let us pray together? Heavenly Father, today, words are not enough. The men have, and women have given their lives. It's come at great cost to them, but they did it gladly because they love America. And we know that today we still stand one nation under God because of brave men and women who have given all. In Jesus' name, amen. Afghanistan two weeks when he got killed. He was from Houston County. Who is he? Jeremy Sean Bohanna. I think his parents moved in here from somewhere. There's not too many people who know the family. Uh, some of the honor guard found his grave in the cemetery that was put flags on. We've had his name up here on the tomb. Thanks. 